Welcome. This is Thursday, April the 1st, 2021, and perhaps depending on where you are listening from, it's no April Fool's when you open up the door and there's about a half inch to three quarters of an inch of snow that came during the night. Well, as they say in any state, uh, welcome to Pennsylvania, and you can see all four seasons in 24 hours. We continue with our series here, Sorrow Over My Sin. This is lesson number eight. And what I would like to do this morning is to take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11a, the first part of this verse. And it says this. For behold, what earnestness this very thing, this godly sorrow, has produced in you. There are some significant observations I would like to make. And then in the days to come, we will take a look at the six marks of godly sorrow. So the first observation is the phrase, for behold. In the Greek, this is a very strong phrase is not a phrase of surprise it's a it's a phrase of uh, of affirmation uh look see do you see what's going on uh it can be pictured as reminding someone of the results of an action which is apparent here in verse 11 so when we are looking at godly sorrow we should not be surprised when it happens, but we should be um, pleased, and that's not really the right word. We should be in a position to affirm to the person who is demonstrating godly sorrow, look what you're doing, see what is taking place. And this is related to the earnestness, for behold, what earnestness this very thing uh the haste that a repentant person demonstrates the diligence of thoroughness to care for the matter it's not haphazard it is not cavalier and then this very thing is referring to the sorrow that is according to the will of god that we talked about in the recent broadcast that is mentioned two times in verse 9 and in verse 10 as we concluded that there is a sorrow that is according to the will of god which would please god honor god glorify god uh, fulfill his purpose and then there is a sorrow according to the world and we looked at the summary yesterday one leads to death, one leads to being rescued. And then, behold, what earnest this, this very thing, and then he clarifies, namely, the godly sorrow, and reminding ourselves that this word is uh, related to deep pain, uh, grief, to move and to motivate to action. And the adjective godly is there. So, this is something the Spirit of God produces. And the Spirit of God is given to the believer to conform them to the image of Christ. So the Spirit of God understands what needs to be done in order to glorify Christ in our actions. And so he will produce the conviction. He will produce the evidence that needs to be addressed biblically and uh, the goal is here to be moved and motivated to action that would be pleasing to the lord and then has produced in you this is an interesting greek word it means something that is the result of labor something that is the effect of labor uh, to achieve something, to work out, to bring about. So as we mentioned earlier, 
godly sorrow is a spiritual laborious task that can take mental and emotional and even physical um, uh, toll on a person. Uh, it's not, as I said a few minutes ago, cavalier. It is not uh, come uh, easy come, easy go uh, aspect. This, this godly sorrow produces something in us, and that production is our interaction with the Spirit of God who is presenting the Word of God about a violation of the Word of God. And so the next time that we get together, we want to take a look at what are the six marks of godly sorrow? What do they mean? Because these are Greek words that the English have a hard time trans translating. And then what would it look like? So we're not going to look at all six words at a crack because of the design of the broadcast here. And also each one would be a uh, taken together would be a very lengthy broadcast. So we want to take a look at them in pieces uh, for the characteristics. And so I trust that you will uh, return uh, with us on Friday, April the 2nd, and we'll look forward to seeing you.